This podcast is produced by the Harwood Productions Podcast Network. To learn more about the network and to find more of our shows, visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. Hey there guys, and welcome back to another episode of SketchUp, a 3D Toolbox. I'm your host Cameron Harris, and today we're starting a brand new series of episodes all on actually modeling a living room. We're going to start today by modeling the walls and then adding doors and windows. So let's get started. Alrighty, so what I've done here is I've launched SketchUp, and I've just created a new project, and at the moment I haven't saved this, so that's the first thing we want to do. So we'll just go ahead and save this and I'll just save it to the desktop for now and let's call it a uh, living room got that saved now of course the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of this guy um, just go ahead and click on him delete him he's in every single SketchUp project just as a kind of a guideline that way you don't get lost in 3d space um, but we don't need him in this case, so that's just fine. Now the first thing we're going to do uh, is model uh, the floor. And from the floor we will extrude the walls. And I'll show you what I mean. But basically the first thing you want to do is you want to figure out what the dimensions of the room you're modeling are. Now in this case I'm just going to make some up off the top of my head, but if you wanted to you could um, model your own living room, you know, get out a tape measure, do some measurements, uh, and actually model a real room if you wanted to, or you can just follow along with me if you want to do the exact same thing that I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to position myself so that I'm kind of right above the scene looking down. Uh, and just to kind of help me with that, I'll just gonna, I'm just going to draw a quick little rectangle right here. And you can see that this is kind of a typical side view I want to be looking right up at the top so like I'm positioned right over it zoom myself out a little bit there we go and now I'll just go ahead and delete this so now the first thing uh, I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a rectangle and I'm actually gonna make a, an L-shaped room to keep it a little bit a little bit more interesting um, and for drawing L-shaped rooms you can actually just uh, draw two rectangles and then merge them together. And I'll show you that. Uh, so I'll start at the axis. I always like to start at the very center of the model or the origin. So that little gold dot right there that I'm snapping to. Click once, draw out with the rectangle tool. And uh, now I can type in some dimensions using the dimensions box. Really useful when you're modeling a room that you want to be very precise. So let's say, uh, let's say this room is going to be oh let's go with a uh, 10 feet wide so I'll go 10 and then apostrophe to uh, make it feet rather than inches comma for uh, to switch from width to height and now I'll type in oh let's go f uh, let's go 13 and a half feet and again I'm just making these up off the top of my head hit enter and you can see it's a little bit bigger. It's hard to tell how big something's going to be if you haven't modeled anything. You don't have any sense of scale. So there we go. That's our first rectangle. Now let's say that the room has another little piece that uh, juts out here a little bit, right around here. Well, what I can do is I can just snap to this corner right here and then just click and drag out an edge like this. And let's say we want this to be, oh, let's see here. Let's say we want it to be uh, 10 feet in that direction, 10 apostrophe, comma, and 8 feet. 8 apostrophe, go. Now one thing to keep in mind is that you always have to make sure that um, you're checking uh, which, which number. So like I've entered two numbers. I've entered a 10 foot and an 8 foot. It's important that you know which side those are going to be applied to. Like in this case, the 8 feet went this way the long way which is what I wanted and uh, or I'm sorry the 10 foot that's the longer number <laughs> uh, the 10 feet uh, is going this way so it's stretching out longer this way and the 8 feet is going this way but it could have just as easily gone 8 feet this way and 10 feet that way which isn't what I was going for and the way I always like to check and I'll just redo this and show you what I'm talking about keep an eye on the dimensions box I'll go ahead and draw the rectangle again 
And as I'm just drawing free form, not typing anything in, just moving my cursor around, you notice in the dimensions box, the numbers are changing. And if I just kind of make a really, really long, really skinny rectangle, just temporarily, not going to click or anything like that, and just move it around a little bit, you can see right there, it's saying that right now it's 11 foot, roughly, by uh, 4 feet. Or specifically, 11 feet, 6 and a quarter inches by 4 feet and 4 inches. And uh, so clearly, the first number is going to be the long side, and the uh, second number is going to be the shorter side. So I now know that if I were to type in 10 foot first and then 8 feet, the 10 feet would be going this way and the 8 feet would be going this way. Now, this doesn't, there's no real exact way to know this. Uh, it really depends on your orientation, the way you're looking at the model. So you want to be, just keep that in mind. Nice little tip. Just go and enter in 10 feet by 8 feet. There we go. Now, the one problem with this, this is like my little, my little floor plan, but the one problem with this is that we have this line right here. Because they're two separate rectangles, although they're connected, we've got this line splitting up here, and that looks a little bit weird. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch to the selection tool, select that line, and delete it. And because this face here is still surrounded on all edges, it basically just becomes one face without that line. So if I undo that, you notice right now I click on this face, it selects that one. I click on this face, selects that one. They're two separate ones, but once I delete this line, it's one solid face. And that's just a really good idea to kind of keep things clean and looking, you know, nice and uh, natural. So we've got our little floor plan. This is what the inside of the room uh, is going to be. That's the dimensions. So the next step is to model the walls. Now, you might think to extrude this into 3D, you just switch to the push-pull tool, click on the face once, and drag it up. But you'll notice what happens when you do that is you get this solid brick. Now, admittedly, you can, if you zoom in on this face, you'll crash into it and you'll actually go through it, and you're now inside this box. And it does look like a room. But the thing you have to keep in mind about this is, if I just temporarily delete this face here, and look at it, you'll notice the walls have no depth. <laughs> They're just planes. They're just faces. They have no depth to them whatsoever, which isn't really the best way to work. It gets really bizarre if you start working like this where your walls are paper thin. You want walls to you know have a normal thickness, like say six inches. So I'm going to show you how you can do that very easily. I'll just zoom back out of here. And I'll just undo to get back to my original face. What we want to do is we want to basically uh, create kind of a, a border around this thing. We want to create a slightly larger version of these lines surrounding it so that we have our walls. Now, that, that may not make much sense because it's a very visual thing to see. So I'll show you what we're going to do. The tool we're going to use is a rather special tool. Um, this is a brand new one. We haven't covered it before because it's not really a tool you use very much. Uh, you use it mostly when you're creating things like rooms and things like that. It's called the offset tool and it's up here uh, in your uh, toolbar. You notice it says offset. It kind of looks like a little half donut with an arrow. You can also find it over in the uh, tool palette right there. And uh, the keyboard shortcut for it, in case you need that, is uh, the letter F. F for off set. It's kind of a little bit tricky to remember, but just tap the F key and now you've no you notice that your uh, your tool switches to uh, that little icon. Very nice. Now the way you use the offset tool is, uh, you notice as I hover over this face, it selects it. Uh, you hover over the face that you want to create an offset from, if that makes sense. And what you do is you just click anywhere in the face really, it doesn't really matter. Just click once and now you notice as I move my cursor around, you notice that I'm getting a smaller version of these lines out here. Now, the one thing you have to keep in mind is that if you go in too far, they start to offset and flip around and it gets kind of weird. So it's best to keep it out here somewhere. But you can go inwards as well as outwards with it. And you can see now that th these kind of look like 
these are starting to kind of look like walls. If you're if you were looking at like a two dimensional floor plan or a blueprint, this is kind of looking more like that. Now, what we want to do, I'm just going to hit the Escape key to cancel this and explain what we're going to do. Um, we could go two ways with this. We could create the walls like this, where they're in like that, or we can extend them out. Now, I find it's way easier to extend them out simply because I've made all my measurements from the inside of the room. If I create the walls like in here, it's going to make the room smaller because basically the, this inside edge is now going to become the inside of the room and as such the room will be you know six inches um, smaller on all sides, not very accurate. Whereas if you extend out like this, the original shape that we made will still be the interior of the room. So that's really the best way to go with that. And also when you're using the offset tool, as always our little measurements box down there, you notice it's shifted to distance, that's how much you're offsetting all of these lines. Now a typical uh, interior wall um, depth is about six inches. So what we're going to do is we're just going to type the, uh, the number six in here. Six for six inches, no apostrophe because we don't want to do feet, and then we'll just hit enter. And you'll notice that it automatically, I'll just switch to the selection tool by hitting the space bar, it automatically created these lines that are exactly six inches away from their original lines on all sides, and it automatically created this little second face out here like a little border. Those are going to be our walls. So you'll notice now if I use the push-pull tool, just hit the P key to switch to the push-pull tool, hover over not the interior face but this exterior face here, click once and then drag up, I now have these walls. And they look like walls. This is really the best way to start modeling rooms is to make it so that they have a six inch depth or whatever depth, but six inches is kind of typical. And then just extrude them up to a typical room height, which a typical height for a room is about eight feet. So we'll just type in eight apostrophe go. And now it's resized them all to eight feet. So now we have our three dimensional walls. Now that's very nice, but while we have fixed the problem of paper thin walls, we have a new problem of a paper thin floor. So, you know, just like the walls, the floor is now just a single face. And you'll also notice that it's purple. Uh, all faces in SketchUp, all rectangles, all shapes have two sides to them. They're kind of like their right side outside and their inside outside. So, if that makes sense. There's one side that you're meant to see, and there's one side that's like the inside of it that you're not meant to see. And if it's purple, that's the side that you're not really supposed to see. So like if we were to fly, for example, like you notice these, these walls here, these faces are white. That's the side that you're supposed to have facing out. But if you zoom inside them, just hold your breath and crash through the wall pretty much, you'll notice that the inside of it is all purple. Let me stick around in here. The inside of it is all purple because all those sides are meant to be facing in. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't really matter, but it kind of helps to have everything facing the right way. Um, but back to our floor problem, the floor is paper thin. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the push-pull tool to fix that. Now, it's pretty simple to do. You just use the push-pull tool, you grab that face, and you pull it up. And uh, I like to use uh, about six inches. Uh, you, you can have your floor be however thick you want, but you know six inches for me is pretty typical. Just type in six and then go. Now, here's our first problem. That has made all of these walls shorter. So like the distance between the floor and the walls are now seven and a half feet rather than eight feet. So the first thing we want to do is we want to just grab these walls again. Just, you know, so I can still hover over that little exterior face here, grab it, pull it up another six inches, and now we've... Uh, we're back to our normal eight foot height here. But you notice that our floor is still purple. Now SketchUp doesn't always flip the uh, sides around the correct way when you're uh, using the push-pull tool. Most of the time it does like it did with these walls here, but it doesn't always do it. So here's a nice way to flip it around. Just um, right click or control click, uh, hold down the control click key and click or use the right button on your mouse. Control click or right click on the face that is purple. And now you get this nice little pop-up menu here. It's the same way that we were grouping things uh, in our la uh, one of our previous episodes. And what we're going to do is there's a command right here that says reverse faces. 
just choose reverse faces, flips it around, and now it's white. So this is a great, great starting point. We have pretty much now modeled our first room. Now the next step to do, of course, is to, um, you know, right now it's a completely sealed room. <laughs> people can't get in, people can't get out. So the next step to do is start mo uh, modeling some holes, basically. Some doorways, some windows, things like that. Now I would like to have a doorway right here, I think. And let's also put another doorway right here. So how do you do doorways? We haven't really covered uh, punching holes through things before. Um, so let's go ahead and cover that now. The first thing you want to do is you want to figure out uh, what size and what position you want your doorway to be. I want my doorway to be right here. And uh, I want to be centered on this wall, I think. And I want, uh, I want to be about, let's make it a kind of a wide doorway. Let's say we make it four feet wide and um, six and a half feet tall. That's kind of an average, uh, average door height and uh, a little bit wider width, but we're gonna have it be a doorway. So um, the first thing we wanna do is because we want to be centered, we're going to actually use uh, our old friend, the tape measure tool. If you haven't watched our episode on the tape measure tool, go back and watch it now because we're gonna use some techniques that we learned in that episode. Uh, tape measure tool, the shortcut for it is T, so we'll just type the letter T on our keyboard. We now get the tape measure tool. And the first thing we want to do is we want to determine where the center of the wall is. Now we don't need to go measuring and then dividing that by two. In SketchUp things actually snap to the center of other things. So what we'll do is um, we will actually click on one of the side walls here, one of the lines here. It automatically snaps to the lines and we can click on either this one or this one. Let's start with this one. Click once and now you're pulling out uh, what looks like a little dotted line, it's actually going to be a guide. It's not a line, it's not actual geometry that affects the model, it's a little guideline for you. And uh, you want to click on a line that is oriented the same way you want your guide. So I clicked on a, on a vertical line to get a vertical guide. If I were to click on a horizontal line, I would get a horizontal guide. So that's very nice. Let's go ahead and use this guide and mark the center. Now you notice it's not really snapping anywhere. That's because we need to actually have our tape measure hovering over one of the lines. We can either use the bottom line or the top line up here. I'll just use the bottom one and zoom in on a little bit. Looks like this is around the center. There we go. You notice uh, that little um, blue dot. If you get a blue dot, that means that you're at the center of that particular line. And you can see that uh, when I hover over it, it says four feet. The length box also says four feet, and we know that this room was eight feet wide, this particular section of it anyway. So we know that four feet is dead center, so we'll just click once, and now we've got this nice little guide on this wall. And the guide, you know, goes up forever, and it goes down forever. It has no end. So, um, but don't worry about it. It doesn't affect your model at all. It's just for, it's just there to be your own little, uh, little helper. So the next thing we want to do is we know that this is the center. Our doorway is going to be t uh, four feet wide. So what we want to do is we want to make two new guides that are um, each two feet away from this center line. So we want a two foot guide over here and a two foot guide over here. And then we'll have a four foot um, guide basically. Between those two guides will be four feet dead center on this wall. So we'll just click once on this guide. It's really nice too because you can use guides as the base for a guide. So it's really nice. Just click once on the dead center guide, pull it out, and now we're going to type in two feet, two apostrophe, two feet. There we go. That's our guide for the right side. Now we're going to do the same thing for the left. Two feet, go. Now we no longer need this little um, center guide, so I'm just going to click once. Make sure it's blue. It's a little hard to tell sometimes if the guides are selected. So look closely. Delete. Good. And now uh, I said we wanted this thing to be uh, seven and a half feet tall. So I could use the rectangle tool to control the height, but it's way easier, I find, to just make all of your guides, as long as you're doing it now, just make all the guides you could possibly need and then just let the rectangle tool snap to it. So we're just going to click on the horizontal floor line right here, click once, 
And that's actually a good thing to know. If you click on like a point, like a corner or the center point, you notice I'm not getting my nice little guidelines anymore. I'm just getting a little, little measurement thing. For some reason, if you click on a corner or a, a center like that, you don't get the guidelines. You have to be somewhere just kind of free forming in the middle of the line, nowhere specific like the center or the edges. So just somewhere on the line, click once and there we go. Now we've got our guide. And uh, we want this doorway to be uh, six and a half feet tall. I might have said seven and a half earlier. Sorry about that. Uh, so we'll just type in 6.5 apostrophe go. And now you'll notice that we've got uh, a nice little outline of where we want our doorway to be. We've got the floor, of course, is one side, but then we've got these guides for the other three sides. The next step is to actually make these guides um, real. These little, this little outline here isn't affecting the model right now. You notice if these were real lines, each of these blocks would be their own little thing. But of course, then we would have a doorway here and here and here and here and here and here. So guides are way easier to do this with. So the next step is just to use the rectangle tool. Go down to one of these corners and you notice that, here, let me zoom in on here a little bit, where this guide and the floor line intersect, we have a little snapping point and it says intersection. Just click once there. Oops, I think I missed it. There we go. Click once there and now we can just drag it up to the opposite corner on the top right snap to the intersection of those two guides and click once. And now you'll notice that if I switch to the selection tool, we've got that face and the surrounding face. And that's exactly what we want. So we don't need these guides anymore. So we're going to use the ever so helpful command up in the edit menu, edit, delete guides. And those guys are gone. We're just left with this little face right here. And the next step is actually to punch a hole through this. We actually use the push pull tool, strangely enough. And what you do is you switch to the push pull tool. You make sure that you have a, a face on the wall. It has to be on the wall that you're punching a hole through. Make sure that it's on the wall. It's part of that face and that it is exactly the doorway or the window or basically the hole you want. Click on the inside face once. And now you see I can pull this out, but I don't want to do that. I want to push it in. This is where the push part of the push pull tool comes in. If I push it through, you'll notice it actually snaps and now I'm getting this weird kind of purpley whitey thing. That means that that I have now reached the other side and I'm now up against that the, the opposite face of the wall. So I've punched through the wall. If I click now, look what happens. It automatically has deleted both of the faces, both the face that I was pushing and the face on the other side, and it's automatically created the faces all around the edges for me right here. So it's really a quite useful tool. The one thing you have to keep in mind is that it does leave a little line down here behind, but you can just select that line. You notice it's not selecting the lines on either side. Just select that one line and delete it, and now it keeps the floor all one smooth piece instead of being these two separate pieces. So we want to make sure we delete that. So that's excellent. Now let's do the same thing over on this wall. I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. And uh, if you want, you can go ahead and pop open SketchUp, see if you can keep up. Um, first thing I'm going to do, switch to the tape measure tool, grab from the side, make a guideline in the center. Perfect. This is a slightly wider wall, so it's five feet to the center. And now I'm going to pull out a two foot guy there a two foot guide there. Select the center guide, delete it. Pull up from the ground, not from a midpoint or a corner point. Pull up from the ground, 6.5 feet, go. All right, use the rectangle tool. Got our doorway, delete the guides and push that face through, boom, doorway. And now we'll just select that line down here again, delete that. So now we've got doorways for people to go into our room and exit our room. And you can see they look out onto the gorgeous <laughs> SketchUp generated landscape. Very nice. And uh, you know, if you wanted to, go ahead and go crazy. Add some windows to this room. Uh, do whatever you want to do. In the case of a window, actually, let me show you what you would do with a window. 
it's the same thing as a doorway, except that with a doorway, you want the bottom of the hole to be completely level uh, with the floor or the ground. But in the case of a window, that you don't really want that. So let's actually make uh, a window right here. And I'll actually show you a nice little trick for making multiple windows that are exactly the same. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out how high up from the floor I want the, uh, the bottom edge or the sill of the window to be. So I'm going to use the tape measure tool again, grab from the floor, pull up, and let's say I want this to be three feet from the floor. Very nice. Next thing I do is, uh, let's say I want to, each window to be four feet tall. So I'll just select from this line here, choose four feet, go. And let's say I want this window to be three feet from this edge of the wall right here. Select there, three feet, go. And each window, well, let's see here. Let's make each window about three feet. So there we go. So that's a that's a pretty um, pretty much the same thing as a doorway, except that we made another guide up from the floor right here. So now we'll just use the rectangle tool and trace that out. Perfect. Delete the guides. Whoops. There we go. Now before I push this thing back in and make a window, I actually want to have several windows like this on the wall, and there's actually a very easy way to do that. Rather than having to redo all the guides and everything like that, what I can do is actually, before I push the thing back in, double click on it, and that'll select both the face and all of the edges around it. Just a single click will just select one element, remember? Double click will select the face that you're double clicking as well as its surrounding lines. Triple clicking, of course, selects everything that's connected to it, but we just want double click. Switch to the Move tool and grab the window from one of its corners, right here, but before you click, press the Option key. Remember, the Option key turns the Move tool into a Copy and Move tool. Click once, and now we've got a little copy of this thing, which is automatically kind of stuck to the wall. You notice I can't pull it away from the wall. I could if I wanted to, but it takes a little bit of work. You gotta really kind of pull it off. It's kind of stuck to a face now. And that's very nice. So what I want to do is I actually want to move this over. And you see it's actually automatically snapping to the red axis, so I'm not moving it up and down. It's perfectly in line with the other one. If I wanted to be you know, really specific, I could just tap um, the right arrow key and lock it to the red axis manually just so that no matter what I do, it's not going anywhere but the right axis, the red axis, that is. And let's say I want to put this window right... Oh, let's say I want to move it about uh, five feet, let's say. Even if you're just kind of guesstimating, I always like to keep the measurements rather than like just, just kind of free-forming it, like I'll make another one, rather than just free-forming it and just putting it wherever I want, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. That's six feet and seven-eighths of an inch. That's kind of a weird measurement. It's way easier if you were to just make it six foot six, for example. But I'll just do another five feet here, keep everything even. So now we've got these three uh, faces right here that are ready to be made into windows. And actually, I can go one step further, select it and copy it again. But if I move my mouse over to this face, this other wall, look at that. It automatically rotates itself and snaps it to that wall. But you notice it's kind of lost itself a little bit. It kind of can go anywhere. It gets a little bit tricky because... You know, you want to make sure that you know where it is on the wall. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually make another guide just for height on this wall, just so I'm positioning it at the same height as the other windows. So I'm going to click once on the ground right here, or the floor, click on that edge, pull up a guide. But, oh shoot, how how high above the, the floor did I make those windows? If you're doing this later, you might easily forget. Or you can't, you know, you're just not entirely sure. There's a very easy way to um, snap this to the height of other things. Just tap one of the uh, up or down arrow keys. Either one works. And that'll lock your guide to the vertical axis. So that even if I move my tape measure wherever I go, the guide's not going anywhere but up and down on that face. Then just hover your tape measure over the bottom edge of one of your other windows. 
and you'll notice it automatically snaps the height of the guide to the exact same height as that sill. Very useful. So just click once, and there you go, you've got your guide. So the next thing I'm going to do is just reselect my uh, face over here. I'm going to grab him from this corner this time and stick him over here. Now I'm going to st st stick him anywhere I want, but what I'm going to do next is I'm going to actually make another guide from this edge here, three feet. Because I have this guy, you notice if I make a quick little measurement here, that window is three feet from that corner, so I want this window to be three feet from that corner as well. So I'll just make that guide there. I was a little bit off, so I'll just grab him right there and move him over again. Bingo, there we go. And now I will just create another window five feet this way. Whoops, I did 55 feet. <laughs> you got to watch what you're typing sometimes. Five apostrophe go there we go so now I've got all these faces I didn't have to do too many guides just had to copy everything over and now what I can do is I can just use a push-pull tool on every single one of these guys punch them out and then delete the guides for a nice finishing touch and there we go we've got our first room. We got walls, we got floors, we got windows, we got doors. I mean, there's nothing in them, but we've got the holes for them at least. This is going to be the basis of the model that we're going to be working on for the next series of episodes. So I hope you join me next time. We're actually going to start furnishing this place with some furniture. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We're going to continue working on our living room in the next several episodes. Uh, next time, we're going to be working on actually building some furniture for it, like chairs and tables. And uh, those can get a little bit more complex than just a simple room. So we're going to go step by step through that. Now, until next time, you can always visit us online at www.harwoodpodcast.com. There we have the forums, the show notes, uh, li links to lesson files and all that great stuff. And if you have any questions or comments for me or ideas for the show, or even if you're having trouble with your own models, feel free to send me an email. I have a brand new email address, Cameron at HarwoodPodcast.com. Until next time, I'll just say goodbye and good modeling.